Welcome everybody. My name's Anne and hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm delighted to introduce my guest for today, which is um, Kirsten Buxton. And yeah, welcome Kirsten. Thanks, Anne. Ah. <laughs> hi, Kirsten. Hi. Okay, I'm going to interview Kirsten today about um, a raging fire um, in Utah that was heading towards the monastery quite recently. And um, I want to show a clip so that everybody can get an idea of the intensity of, of the fire. But is there anything you'd like to say first, Kirsten? No, that sounds great. We can just start off with a good visual to give everyone an idea of the, the magnitude of what was happening. So, mm. uh, okay, thank you. Nicholas, if you'd like to show the clip, that'd be wonderful. And now tracking Utah's wildfires spreading throughout the state this morning. One of them is destroying dozens of homes. That's the Dollar Ridge fire in Duchesne County. It's burning thousands of acres of forest and brush. News for Utah's Brittany Johnson joins us now from the scene of the fire with some new information for us. Brittany, what have you learned? Well, we have learned a lot, Emily and Brian, in this last few minutes. We have learned that this fire has grown to 40,469 acres that just came in this morning from the firefighters morning briefing here. You can see them still gathered behind me. Now, we also have new evacuations this morning. These are voluntary evacuations from the Duchesne County Sheriff's Office for the following places, Aspen Grove, Pine Hollow, and 40 damn acres. Again, those are voluntary evacuations. But something else that we just learned here at this morning's briefing, firefighters are asking you if you have been told to leave your home and it is a mandatory evacuation, please do not try and go back. Right now, they are still trying to fight this fire. It is 0% contained and you are getting in their way and getting into danger if you go back to your home and you are under a mandatory evacuation. So so unfortunately, all you can do right now is stand by and watch as this 40,000 acre blade blaze feasts on the ridge line they call home. Firefighters say this Dollar Ridge fire is burning out of control. It's being fueled by red flag warnings, and we've seen helicopters scooping water from the nearby Strawberry Reservoir. That was all yesterday. The fire is moving closer to Highway 40 in Fruitland and forcing evacuations. Meantime, ground crews are also being pushed from the fire lines by windy and unpredictable conditions. It's incredibly frustrating to, uh, to watch uh, with, with little or no control over the situation. You know, these are individuals that are used to having an impact and uh, making a difference. And so uh, to, to watch the homes uh, go like this is, it's, it is really difficult and uh, uh, it takes a toll. We'll be live out here all morning long and continue to pass you updates on air and online at goodforutah.com. I'll also be live with another report on midday today at 11. But for now, reporting live in Duchesne County, I'm Brittany Johnson, News 4, Utah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. So we can see this was absolutely huge, 40,000 acres, and that's about 72 square miles of fire that was actually potentially coming towards the monastery. So I'd like to ask you, you know, if you can tell us about the lead up to the evacuation, because you were actually evacuated from the monastery. <laughs> I forgot to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Yeah, well, we were, we were still in the silent retreat when uh, it was the day before it was ending. And uh, I looked up into the sky and there was a little shot of it in that clip where the sky was just mystical. I was like, wow, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> and the moon was glowing orange and it was just the most amazing uh, scene. And I was wow. down in the campground, so I went up to talk to Suzanne and Jackie and Suzanne said, yes, it's a, it's a wildfire. So we started researching it. And it had gone from 20 acres to 6,000 acres, boom, just like that, in a few hours. And, uh, and so at that point, um, it was really nowhere near the monastery. We knew that we were not in any kind of danger. But uh, 
it was an uncontained growing wildfire. <laughs> so we, it just kept us yeah. in prayer in such a deep, a deep way. Uh, none of the participants had their cell phones on them <laughs> because we'd taken them off them all for the silent retreat. So we were in this like position. It almost felt like the spirit, like, okay, we have the big picture. We're going to research it all. We're going to stay in tune of everything that's happening and communicate only what's needed, which at this point is nothing. We just to stay in silence and stay in prayer. And then, uh, we were just keeping a close eye on all the news and then the next morning we brought everyone out of the silence and told them that we were going to finish an hour early to make sure everyone could get to the airport on time. Um, and so it was very calm and very peaceful. Just we had our gratitude circle as planned, <laughs> had a brunch as planned, put everyone in the vehicles and then they were all off property. So for me that was <laughs> that was my main thing, I really just wanted everyone off property who didn't need to be there. But then the next day, we had our whole new group of volunteers coming in, uh, the berries, as they're calling themselves. <laughs> <laughs> the new volunteers who've come in from around the world to volunteer and set up for our Strawberry Fields Festival. And so I called Ricky and I, I told her what was happening. And I said, um, yeah, you're, you're going to have to take everyone to Camus. Um, they're not to come out here to the monastery. <clears throat> so it was, it was like a huge redirection for, for us and for everyone, like right from, from that moment. Okay, I suppose that leads me into my next question, which is how did you know what to do? How did you know what to take with you? Um, and most importantly, how you were able to stay so connected with spirit in a situation that would have most people pretty terrified and wondering what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it was such perfect timing that we were in a silent retreat. <laughs> Four days of very deep, deep stillness and wow. presence and quiet you know I rest in God was one of the lessons that I read one morning to take us all into a really deep truth you know and in that lesson it says this one thought is the answer to everything of this world this world born of clashing dreams and when you look at the scene of the wildfire it's like that versus the stillness and so Suzanne Jackie and I were just we stayed in the stillness and we just didn't leave it. Um, and in that presence, we would pray, what do we do? Nothing. No. What do we move on? Nothing. Other than, and then we just heard, we would just be told what to do. There were three new volunteers for the strawberry pod who'd already been at the silent retreat. So we just heard to have them go down to Camus. And then we prayed and I was to go with them. I was to come down and be down here in Camus. So the day before I drove down, I went down to the cabin. That's where I was staying. I said, okay, Jesus, what would you have me pack up? Um, you know, all of the things in the, ca in the cabin. Do I take the toaster and the blender and the kettle? <laughs> you know, what do I pack? What do I do? And I prayed and I heard, I want you to clean the cabin. It's like, I mean, I don't question Jesus, but I was, did I hear right? <laughs> I want you to clean the cabin. And it was, it was really deep, actually, because I felt like I just packed my bag, a small bag of what I was to take, you know, just of clothes and things, but nothing yeah. else. The focus was on listen and follow. And uh, so I vacuumed and I just wiped down all the surfaces. <laughs> I was in such stillness and peace. I was like, are you sure? Do I take extra winter clothes? No, only take what's necessary. And that was the guidance all the way through. Don't think ahead. And my favorite saying that's come out of this is don't canyon hop because the fire <laughs> the <wind> started coming <laughs> from 6,000 acres to 30,000 within eight hours. It was like whew, out of control, uncontained. And we were not to canyon hop. The fire was canyon hopping. It could hop from one canyon to another because it was so hot. And with the wind, the sparks would fly. Mm -hmm. And our whole training was don't think ahead. And 
the thing is, is like as mystics, Suzanne, Jackie and I, we've gone so deeply into this truth, like this world holds nothing that I want. Mm. And beyond this world, there is a world I want. And right now I'm in the world that's beyond this world. <laughs> There's nothing in this world that I want. And so we didn't feel that we wanted to run around looking after stuff and saving stuff. It wasn't, we didn't have fear. We didn't have attachment to it. And yet it's Jesus's monastery. You know, it's, it, mm -hmm. we're stewarding it for him, the property and everything in it. That, and it's his events. It's his festival that's coming. It's his mystery school, his heart's home <laughs> workshop. And so we're there to really listen and take care of, of what we're to do. So once I'd come down to Cam to Camus, that's when um, we were moved into the pre-evacuation status, which means get ready to move. The, the cops or the, the deputies could come and knock on the door at any moment and, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, and want you to leave within a very short space of time. So that was when we started to really prey on, okay, what, what's to happen and what's to be moved. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that was the, the guidance around the movements. But what about the communication? You know, you've got all these people coming to these three different events very soon. Uh, there's no idea at this moment, you know, like about when the fire might be contained and um, you can move back in, anything like that. So how did you know what and when to communicate? Because that's really fascinating to me, you know, that... Um, you know, do, do these people need to know? You know, we're not a ministry where there's private thoughts or anything like that. So how, how does that kind of, yeah, all come together? Mm, yeah, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good question. Well, the, the short answer is guidance. You know, we were listening so specifically to what to do, what to say, what to communicate in every moment for everything. And yeah, normally we're on social media sharing everything <laughs> that we're doing, but what we're sharing is truth, um, the miracle. Yeah. Always what we're communicating and extending from this ministry is I am with you. you know, there's a presence and a truth and a miracle and an invitation um, through what we're extending for the mind to rest, you know, to open up and rest and be in what's real. And so all we could have communicated at that time was hypothetical possibilities. Like we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't know what's mm. going to happen to the monastery. And so that's not even real communication. Uh, so we were just not guided at all to communicate anything that was uncertain. Okay. Uh, yeah. And there was one point when we heard, we were told they were, uh, their estimated containment date was the 20th of July. So that's when they hope to have the fire contained. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had a whole team there ready preparing for the festival. We'd planned to have the whole month of July. But we thought, well, if we're allowed back in on the 18th or the 20th, then it'll just be an all hands on deck, you know, barn raising party. But it, <laughs> being uncontained and the fire kept increasing so there was a thought at one point well shall we start exploring a different venue no. mm -hmm. um, but we didn't even really follow that thought too far it was like no it's not time to go anywhere just stay and trust and we'll be, mm. we'll be told we'll be shown yeah yeah i understand that there was a point where you were allowed to return um so again, it's like, you know, what was the guidance around that? And I believe that it was it Jackie and, um, and Suzanne that went and stayed in a campground. Mm -hmm. Oh, there were <laughs> miracles, <laughs> so <laughs> miracles around there. Like you wouldn't believe the support that came in. Uh, Vince is our builder out there who's helping prepare, build, uh, get some cabins together for the festival. And, and he just like, he was just this angel. Like before we were evacuated, he said, I've got my buddies with semi trucks. You just let me know, you girls. I'll evacuate you <laughs> as soon as you need help. We can take the cabins. We can take the retreat trailer. We can, like, he was ready to jump, you know, and, and do everything. Yeah. So he, 
he had a, a family friend's cabin and so he offered that for Suzanne and Jackie to go and stay in so that they were fairly close by. And before we were evacuated completely, the one thought they had was we would love to get sprinklers on the roofs of the building. Mm -hmm. that, that would really give us peace of mind. Um, but we had no way of doing that. We didn't have the equipment and we didn't have anyone who could climb up on the ladders onto the roof and do that with a screw gun. So okay. they just trusted. And they went out over to the cabin. They were there two days. And then right as Vince pulled up their driveway, uh, meanwhile in Mexico, David and Lisa were following everything on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. With us, with us, with us. And telling everyone in Mexico what was happening. Like, stay in prayer, everyone. This is a time for vigilance and prayer. We're all connected. And then Lisa happened to see an announcement on Facebook in this group, Duchesne Sheriff County group, uh, that they were letting residents back in for two hours into their properties in our area. And so immediately David called, got through to Jackie and told Jackie and Suzanne and Vince was right there. He said, right, I've got the boys, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> they drove to the hardware store, got $500 worth of sprinkler system, like really good ones, like that shoot water out and hoses and they just all got <laughs> the roof and they installed them all and then, oh, okay, now we've done everything that we can do. It's now, it's in your hands, Jesus. It's, it's really your monastery and we've done our part. So Yeah. Wow. Sounds amazing, all those miracles and people just coming in. And that, again, is like a question you like about, um, you know, the guidance being very precise and very clear. And, yeah. And I'd like to ask about how, you know, like all the strawberries uh, or the berries, should I say? Um, yeah, were activated to come up under under that guidance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was beautiful. Actually, they weren't really involved with the with the actual evacuation at, at that end at all. Um, the, while it was still in pre-evacuation, a team of our residents went up from here, a small team like Nicholas, Alexa, Yuda, uh, Marie. And uh, so they jumped in the vehicles and they went up and they were part of like a uh, clearing out, got all the tools and all the bedding. Cause we knew even if it didn't burn, when all that smoke went through, then you know, that's what also does a lot of damage. So we thought, get all the bedding, we've got brand new bedding for the mystery school, get all of that down here. So they did a big clear out um, in all the vehicles and brought everything down here. And that was the welcoming night when the new group of berries arrived. And so okay. they were here. <laughs> so our resident <laughs> team came down after a huge day up there in a, in a uh, evacuation situation, yeah. smoke coming in to the property. Wow. Uh, just on it all day, like just listen, follow, listen, follow, do this, not that, no add-ons, like don't take anything that's not necessary. It had to be very precise, Yeah. Uh, even with what would fit in the vehicles and what could go on the trailer. And, and they came back after that day and I was ready to have a debrief with them, you know, just to <laughs> unload their minds from the day before everyone unloaded the trailers. And they were in joy. Mm. <laughs> they were <laughs> joy and when they came to sit down that they were like a little bit like this <laughs> so it was good to have a debrief and then just some emotion of like whoa what did we just go through and yeah. it could, could move through and then we all came together for our welcome <laughs> um welcome evening and they i just shared the full context of the mind training the testimony to the mind training that I could be involved in a situation like that and come back after a huge day, like that went up six in the morning, came back seven o'clock at night and they're laughing when they arrived back here. <laughs> <laughs> and the berries were like, oh, and they were in tears and their hearts just burst. They were like, this is what I came for. You know? This is what I want. You know, this is everything. And, and so that just started us off in this foundation of um, we're just all in God's hands together. And our plan, you know, of what we thought it would look like has just been completely 
undone. And now yeah. we're just here in the moment. We don't know how long we'll be in Canvas. It could be three days. It could be three weeks. <laughs> and everyone just dived in. We had some people sleeping on the floor for a couple of nights and everyone was so happy. And then <laughs> once we realized we'll be here a little longer, I'm like, I'm hearing to get bunk beds. So off to Ikea, you know, and so, yeah, it's just, just been amazing, really. Yeah, it sounds absolutely incredible, you know, to spend a day like that, you know, like in all that activity and then come back and welcome the new berries. It's just incredible. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think you've answered a lot of my questions. And I was, you know, I'd spoken to you uh, a couple of days ago and, um, yeah, I was feeling you like into how to relate this to the course you know obviously everything that you've told us is about the practical application but I was thinking of a particular lesson and uh, so many came to both our minds because it's just the course in action basically isn't it you know this is the the pure demonstration of what we're being taught by Jesus and um yeah, I think the the one that came through, you know, like the strongest, and I think we both felt it was, um, I am sustained by the love of God. Um, yeah, so I just feel to read from some of that and just go into, you know, like, because it really does, yeah, it does explain exactly what you're telling us. And, um, yeah, just to a moment of, of pause with it. Thank you. Yeah. So here's lesson 50. I am sustained by the love of God. Here is the answer to every problem that will confront you today and tomorrow and throughout time. In this world, you believe you are sustained by everything but God. Your faith is placed in the most trivial and insane symbols, pills, money, protective clothing, influence, prestige, being liked, knowing the right people, and an endless list of forms of nothingness that you endow with magical powers. All these things are your replacements for the love of God. All these things, that is quite emotional, all these things are cherished to ensure a body identification they are songs of praise to the ego. Do not put your faith in the worthless. It will not sustain you. Only the love of God will protect you in all circumstances. It will lift you out of every trial and raise you high above all the perceived dangers of this world into a climate of perfect peace and safety. It will transport you into a state of mind that nothing can threaten, nothing can disturb, and where nothing can intrude upon the eternal calm of the Son of God. And I feel to leave it there. I just sink into that for a few minutes just to really feel... Yeah, the power of what this course brings us.
Okay, thank you so much. I just had a, a 30 second warning, but we've got five minutes, well, nearly five minutes. <laughs> So that's okay. Um, yeah, because the next part of the lesson speaks of being released from idols. And I, yeah, we've got a few minutes left, Kirsten. So I don't know if that's what you feel to talk about or anything else. Mm. Yeah, I think... Yeah, well, Jesus describes what is an idol and it's, it's more... More of what doesn't matter, but it's just if you want more of anything. And I feel like this whole experience of this, it's like, stay with me, stay with me. Don't think about even what else or what next. And I will give you everything you need. I will fill you in. I will give you the information. I'll tell you what you need to do. You know, it all comes from Christ. And that's it. And stay, just stay. And I do, we have a couple of minutes, so I do want to share one more miracle. <laughs> right. um, there was one, there was uh, the night before I left, um, it was 11 o'clock at night, and Suzanne had been in contact with the person down at Camelot, which is eight miles down the road, the owner of that property. And we knew that if Camelot went up in smoke, that meant that the fire had come down into our canyon, and then it could possibly travel up our canyon i mean we have a great firewall with the cliff with greenery we've you know it, but if camelot went then we really knew that whoa this is getting close so she'd seen a photo on facebook and it looked the way the sun was hitting the clouds it looked like 50 foot flames behind camelot <laughs> so she called and she wow. said Good, come up i want you to look at this photo with me so i drove up from the campground up to the monastery just up the driveway I looked at the photo and said, no, definitely not flames. That's sunlight. And then she just said, Kirsten, I just, I really feel like I want to drive down the canyon. I need information. I need to know what's happening. And I prayed and I, well, I don't feel, I can't see us driving down the canyon, but I do feel it go with you. So I said, okay, I'll drive you. She's in her PJs. <laughs> so we jumped in the car. We drove down the driveway and within this 15 minutes that I'd come up from the campground and gone, and she'd said, I need information. We drove down the driveway and there were two deputies there and they blocked the roads off. And they were there with their light, with the flashing, flashing lights. And I rolled down the window and they said, oh, hi, where are you, where are you, what are you doing here and where are you from? We said, well, we're, we're at the monastery. This is our property up top in the campground down the bottom. And we just want information. We want to know what's happening. A deputy said, well, this is my uh, deputy, my co-deputy, Dusty. I'm JC. We can tell you all you need to know. JC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Suzanne, did you hear that? Thanks, <laughs> JC. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and they looked at us like, what's so special? And we're like, if you're in Jesus and you're wanting information and you tell us your initial, your name, Jay Z, I said, you're, you're angels, you're angels. Wow. And they're like, wow, that's great. I love your accent. I could listen to you all day. Tell us about your monastery. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some information first. <laughs> so it was just that, like constant miracles. And you know mm. what they said to us? They said, look, and this is just what, yeah. <laughs> They said, because <laughs> we knew we were safe, but we weren't sleeping so well. <laughs> you can't when you're that activated <laughs> with this uncontained fire. Yeah. So, and you just want to keep watching the updates all the time to make sure you've got the latest information. Mm. And they said to us, look, we're going to be stationed here. They're literally on the corner of our property. They said, tell me which rooms you're staying in. They said, we're going to be here till six o'clock in the morning. And we will come and knock on your door personally, you know, if any change happens in the fire. So it was oh, just. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Mm. 
fantastic oh thank you so much Kirsten this has just been such a demonstration of being sustained by the love of God thank you so much for being here and yeah for, for leading the way for showing us how it how it actually is done <laughs> in the moment <laughs> Mm. Oh, you're so welcome, Anne. I'm honoured to join with you in this way and be in your oh. show. And yeah, and to just join with you all in the miracle. Everyone online, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just in this together. And yep, we're sustained by the love of God. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, everybody. It's been mm. beautiful. Thank you. Bye for now. <laughs>